So Anycubic sent me out this printer, which is a Photon Mono, and I'm going to show you what it can do and how detailed it can get, and if it's maybe one of the best printers in its price range. So let's get started. So like I was saying, this is a Photon Mono, and the Mono part isn't just the name of the printer, it is also what kind of screen it has. It has a monochrome screen. So it is basically, it turns on either black or clear. So it's just on or off, which would allow you to print faster because it allows more UV light to go through it. So this particular printer is on the cheaper end for mono printers, and I think maybe one of the cheapest at $269. And you can get them on sale sometimes for around $229. And what you get is basically the same form factor as every printer on the market right now, pretty much. I think everyone's figured out that this is basically the setup that they're going with. But normally they have differences in their hardware, software, and their price points. So this printer has a very basic design, but it is very functional at the same time. So the build plate itself is just held on with this one screw keeping it in place, and it's just bent sheet metal for the most part for the bracket, and then a machined piece for the bottom with brushed, textured aluminum, it looks like, so your parts will actually stick to it. And they actually stick really good and release really easily, which is a major plus, because it always sucks when you get something stuck on here and you have to hammer it off and then you scratch the build plate. This printer also is using a linear rail in the back instead of groove slots, and it's just a very sturdy setup. Like I was saying, most printers are pretty much set up almost the same nowadays. So when it comes to the vat itself, it is a plastic vat and it has markers to show your max level and different milliliter lines, which is helpful when you're going to make a print and you don't know how much fluid is in here or resin is in here. And it comes off with these little screws that just hold it in place. Very simple design, but it works. So this particular printer has no active filtration system in it and it only has a fan inside to cool down its UV array. When it comes to the on and off switch and the ports, they're all on the side, which is very nice compared to other printers where the on and off switch is on the back somewhere or the USB is on the back somewhere where you can't really see it without moving the printer around. It's nice to have both on the side. I prefer them on the front, but this works perfectly fine. And it's just a little switch to flip and it's on. So when it comes to the front display, it's kind of small and Pretty much all the printers in this price point have tiny little displays. It is very responsive at least, and you can easily preview what you're going to be printing and start your prints from here. Inside the tools, you can move everything around, and this is basically the one time you have to get it set up to level everything out, which I've covered in other videos that I'll have linked in the description or in the card up here. So the screen on this isn't really used for anything other than picking your files to print. All the rest of this is done on the computer using the software that comes with the machine, or you could download from their website. So I did a couple test prints using the Anycubic Translucent Green, along with some of this, which is a basically a water washable ABS-like black resin. And no surprise, everything printed without any problems. We're using the default settings on the software that came with the machine. So as you can see, this is from the Translucent one. And this is the black. So using this lens, you really can't tell the difference on them too much. They look pretty much the same. Even if I get real zoomed in, other than this one is a little fuzzy from it just being around for a little bit. But if you look real close, you can see the layer lines in this one. So I printed all three of these on the same bed at the same time. And there was a little bit of a weird problem with the file where it did this for a support, and I don't know why. And it did it on both files. So I don't know what happened there, but that's the only one that it had a weird thick support to it. And I checked the screen and there's no problems with it. So I need to check the file itself and see what happened. So the difference in the print time and quality, this one was done at 0.05 millimeters layer height, and this one was done at 0.01. And there was a major difference in time in these. This took a little over two hours to print all three of these. And these ones were done in about 12 hours. 
So huge difference in print time. And I'm gonna show you with a different lens what the print quality difference is between a two hour print and a 12 hour print. So I also printed this out, which is the test file that just came on the USB drive and it printed out perfectly. So I just put a macro lens on my camera to show you the difference in print qualities. So this is the one that was printed at 0.01 millimeters and took 12 hours to print. You can see that there are some lines and pretty much you're always going to have tiny lines, but they are very hard to see for the most part. Like you can see them in here are a little. And then even on this one, if you're looking for the lines, can't really see them. Maybe around the center here, you can see the little swirly circles, but that's pretty hard to see without looking through this camera. If you look at the two hour prints, you can see a ton of lines. And if you're doing any type of casting or anything like that, this is going to show up into your casting, which you'll have to polish out to make sure that you don't see all these layer lines. But if you're doing anything like sand casting or anything like that, it won't matter because your details won't be as fine as you can do from vacuum casting or investment casting. And you can see some lines in the background and everything and throughout the whole thing. And we have our scarabs. Yeah, you got a little bit of layer lines there. And on the base down there. But for the most part, not bad. And this one, you can see it all along the top and all through it almost. So all in all, its prints are extremely nice, especially if you have time to wait for the 12 hours that it takes to do the super detailed ones. So I didn't really show off the backs of these that much. It's just a flat back that I cleaned up from all the uh, supports. And then the back like part of this came out pretty nice. It could use some cleanup, but for the most part, the front is what I was worried about. Same thing with the lower quality one. And of course, to do a better comparison, I should have used the same resin twice and just marked which one was which, but I like to use the different colors just so it's easier to see right off the bat. But yeah, I know that I should use the same resin if I'm going to be doing comparisons like that. So one comparison I could show is the comparison between the Photon Mono versus the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Both of these are mono printers, and they both come around the same price point. The Elegoo Mars 2 Pro comes in around $299, and the Photon Mono comes in around $269. So it is around $30 cheaper than the Elegoo Mars. So it does have a slightly bigger build area by like one millimeter on the build plate, and I think about five higher. So if you need something that is exactly that size, then this will give you that little bit more. So the print quality between the two of these are very similar. And I've done a full video on this one, printing out the two hour version that I did on this pretty much. And it looks very similar. So with all that said, would I suggest getting this printer? Well, yes, because it does a great job with its prints. I've had no problems with it so far. Granted, I've only had it for about a week or so. And at its price point and everything, it does the job perfectly. With the monochrome screen, it also should last a lot longer than the normal printers that came before they started putting monochrome inside of them. I think it was supposed to last like four times as long, so that's pretty good. And I forgot to mention that this also has a 2K screen in it. If you wanted to get one that has a 4K screen, and you'd basically eliminate almost all of the like layer marks and the weird little like circle things, 
they have another one that is the Mono X, but it's about double the price at around 800 ish dollars. So if you want something like that, you can get that. It also has a much bigger build volume, so that might be something to look at. I'll have links in the description to everything you've seen in this video, and I hope that this was helpful in your decision on either getting one of these or just looking into resin 3D printing in general for your work. So that's it for this. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you liked the video, leave a like. And if you want more videos like this or more jewelry making, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.